Hey guys, Turk here. Hope y'all are having a great day. Now that the dust has settled a bit with the Steam Deck and most media outlets have had hands-on time with the test units, is it just me or I was a little underwhelmed with the amount of games and the types of games that they've shown us in their reporting? Well, fear not guys, with my hardware know-how and feedback from you guys in the community, I have come up with a top 10 list of our favorite games that we're gonna be playing on our Steam Deck. And we're gonna play them on actual hardware today, guys. No gimmicks here, I have come up with an actual hardware configuration that matches what some of the people were reporting in those videos. If you guys don't believe me, check out my Steam Deck playlist because I want to help you guys learn how I came to my conclusions and hopefully help you guys set it up yourself. Now before we get to the list, let's talk about the setup real quick. In our latest Steam Deck video, we talked about the performance difference when comparing Windows versus Linux on our simulated Steam Deck hardware. And judging by you guys' comments, y'all have got plenty of opinions to go around. Now guys, I am completely aware this is not a pure Arch Linux solution. But guys, Manjaro Linux is a pretty darn close approximation of what SteamOS is going to look like, and it's going to help us wrap our head around the concept of gaming on Linux. For all the games we're going to be playing today, I'm going to be using the Proton GE 1.14 compatibility layer. Now, as we get closer to the Steam Deck release, Valve and all sorts of other people are going to be making updates to Proton. So if you're kind of curious of what type of performance differences are, I definitely recommend y'all go to the GitHub page and check out the release notes and see if those performance improvements actually came to fruition. Now, lastly, if you guys are concerned that your games aren't going to work out on SteamOS, check out ProtonDB.com because as you'll see on one of the games in our list today, it didn't work right out of the box, but after consulting ProtonDB.com, I was able to get it set up and worked around pretty simple and straightforward. Trying to get a good physical representation of the Steam Deck's performance has proven to be quite challenging. Fortunately though, with the Linus Tech Tips video, we actually get to see true performance from the Steam Deck, and in the first level in this specific spot of the map, they are able to get right at 58 FPS. Now, when I load up my original configuration for the Steam Deck, I am able to get anywhere between 63 and 65 FPS. So I'm a, I'm a little over optimistic by about six FPS. So in today's video, we're going to tune back our 5700G to 1.6 gigahertz to match the Steam Deck while still maintaining our DDR4 4200 memory overclock. And guys, when we load up the same scenario with Doom Eternal in the first map, I am able to get 57 FPS. So guys, I think our setup is as pretty much as close as we're gonna get until we get actual hands-on hardware. And for any of you hardware junkies out there in this specific spot in the game, I am running my APU right at 43 watts. So if we take into account any of the performance per watt improvements between Vega and RDNA 2, guys, I think we're right on the money. Lastly, what is gaming on the Steam Deck actually going to look like? In my last video, I tried to show you guys what 720p at lower resolutions would look like for a Steam Deck, but I think I could have done a better job of communicating that. So I went ahead and picked up a 7 inch 1280x800p IPS panel. This is the same kind of monitor we would use on like our cameras, but if you look at it guys, the size and the form factor, it feels like the Steam Deck. And this is the native resolution that's going to be provided with the Steam Deck. So this is a pretty good analog to what we'll get with the device. As for controls, I'm a keyboard and mouse player myself, but I'm going to be using a controller today in most of the games. Uh, this is just a standard uh, last generation Xbox controller. It does have Bluetooth support, but you know I don't want to have to fight any Linux drivers issues. So we're just going to use the little micro USB connector here and uh, using it on our games. Now, not all games have native support for controllers, so I will be using the mouse a little bit here and there. Uh, but for the most part, this is going to be our interface for the Steam Deck. So guys, without further ado, let's start off with number 10, Forza Horizon. I've been playing racing games ever since I was a kid. Now that we have the Steam Deck, the entire catalog of racing games is accessible. Now, I'm going to be using Dirt 5 here to show you guys the door mainly because I can run the benchmark pretty easily, but tons of good racing games can fit in at this spot. Forza, Dirt, F1, and Need for Speed cover the gamut from arcade style to full-on simulators. The deck is an excellent fit here, with under-deck pedals, gyro controls, and steering wheel-like ergonomics. Now that we have a powerful enough portable machine, you can get a few laps in while Ubering to your next checkpoint. The only sticking point here, at least with Dirt 5, is the performance. 
running at 800p, we're able to stay just above 30 FPS with the medium detail settings, and that might not be good enough for some gamers. However, the PC's flexibility allows you to tweak settings and potentially get more FPS for driving around the track. F1 2020 sees above 60 FPS here, so overall, racing games are a great fit for the Steam Deck. Number 9. No Man's Sky Exploration games are becoming more and more engaging over time, and now armed with the mobility of the Steam Deck, you'll be charting coordinates and building bases on the go. Open worlds are challenging to drive on less than capable hardware, but luckily at 800p, No Man's Sky works reasonably well. With slower paced action, the controls in place on the deck should be intuitive for most gamers. And if No Man's Sky isn't your cup of tea, other exploration games would include Death Stranding, Monster Hunter, and a few other games that are coming right up. Number 8. Red Dead Redemption 2 Before you click out of the video guys, the number 8 slot is reserved for open world action games. There are plenty of popular titles out there that fit the bill, such as Grand Theft Auto V, Cyberpunk, and Sekiro. Like the exploration games, open world games are graphically demanding in most cases, but can tolerate lower frame rates for some gamers. For me, Red Dead Redemption 2 is a perfect example, and I can test its performance relatively easy on my mocked up Steam Deck. Even on the 7 inch screen, balanced detail settings look exceptionally good, and even 40 FPS gaming is smooth enough for this game style. My only concern with these types of games is the battery life. When running 100%, this APU will be pulling 15 watts of power. So combine that with other power usage from memory, screen, and system components, and that 40 watt hour battery for the Steam Deck won't last for too long. Regardless, getting a console-like experience in your hand is hard to pass up. Number 7, The Witcher 3. Like other rankings in this video, the number 7 slot has one of the best looking open world RPGs out there. I've seen many people wanting to revisit the Elder Scrolls and Fallout universes, and the Steam Deck will be able to do that just fine. With The Witcher 3, I was initially pretty concerned with how this game would hold up on a mobile device. This game is known for its graphical requirements, but I remain optimistic. Loading it up and dialing in 800p in medium detail and post-processing settings, I can easily hit a comfortable 40 to 50 FPS throughout the first part of the game. I didn't have time to make it to Novigrad, but the Steam Deck will work if sub 60 FPS is enough to dive into the Witcher universe. I also tried out Skyrim on the device, and it plays much better on the Steam Deck. My only concern here is future support for mods in the game. I haven't tried it out yet, but for all you Linux people out there, share your knowledge with us of how to set up the Nexus Mod Manager or other comparable tools in Linux so we can crank it up and install it when the Steam Deck goes live later this year. Number 6. Resident Evil 2 Horror games are not my cup of tea, but judging by your lists on the subreddit, I just couldn't ignore it. Resident Evil has been a staple in the console space for many decades, and it fits right at home on the Steam Deck. I loaded up the demo onto my device, and I applied the settings from the Hardware and Boxes video, and surprised I was able to get between 50 and 60 FPS without breaking a sweat. With the resurgence of horror games coming to the market, playing them on the Steam Deck should be a no-brainer. Now, it's not a horror game by any stretch, but Dark Souls, Phasmophobia, and the like will definitely bring the horror vibe to the deck. Oh yeah, let's not forget Alien Isolation. Number 5. Civilization 6 RTS games have reduced in popularity over time, but there's no other game out there that I've sunk as much time into as Civilization. But can this slow-paced strategy game translate to the stream deck? Well, this CPU should be powerful enough to process the character actions, I'm averaging around 8 to 9 seconds per turn with my mocked up Steam Deck. But how about the screen? I think the detail settings are pretty decent here, but you could come across instances where reading text might cause you a moment of grandparent syndrome as you pull the deck closer to your face. Lastly are the trackpads. Valve is actively working on polishing up this interface, so this could be worrisome for other types of RTS games. On the bright side though, now you don't have to waste away 500 hours in front of your desk, you can play it on the Steam Deck wherever you go. Number 4. Final Fantasy XIV Now, this might be a controversial selection, but with the rise of Final Fantasy XIV, it's hard to ignore the MMO genre. This game looks good and works on a variety of hardware. I've found that the desktop high mode works well within a dungeon, but I think the laptop high mode is better option for in the city. 
Controls for Final Fantasy XIV are pretty straightforward, and the game was developed with controller support built right in. I could see Valve's virtual keyboard being slightly cumbersome, but hopefully the touchscreen interface makes it feel like typing on a tablet. Given this is a more lightweight game, you could probably stretch the battery life a bit with this game, and if you reduce settings even further, you might be able to do some of the main story quests in preparation for the Endwalker expansion. The only reservation that I've seen from the 7-inch screen is that the text could be a bit difficult to read, but fortunately, the Final Fantasy XIV does have HUD scaling options available. Number 3. Knights of the Old Republic Nostalgia is a hell of a drug, and what better way to break in your new gaming rig with some good old-fashioned Knights of the Old Republic? Now, for my testing, I'm using Knights of the Old Republic 2 simply because it has built-in support for the larger resolutions. I think the OG Knights of the Old Republic only supports 1024 by 768 out of the box, but you get the point. Clearly, this device will be able to drive many of the older games with ease, but that becomes the challenging aspect of the Steam Deck. With a bit of fiddling, getting older games to support the different resolutions, controllers, and the like can be accomplished, but some people want to just download the game and go. Fortunately, there are many communities out there that provide support for different games, and there's bound to be Steam Deck communities that will specialize in this sort of thing. Number 2. Final Fantasy VII If you thought Steam had an incredible catalog of games, one can't forget the emulation scene. Now, of course, emulation assumes you legally have permission to run the game on the intended device, so be careful where you're getting your ISOs from. When it comes to older consoles such as the NES, the SNES, PlayStation 1, or PlayStation 2, and probably even the Nintendo 64, the Steam Deck is definitely going to be powerful enough to run your games, assuming they are supported by the emulator you're using. I installed EPSX through the Manjaro install applications, and getting it up and running was very straightforward. There are questions on whether the Switch emulator, Yuzu, will work on the Steam Deck. Judging by the technical specifications, I think the GPU component is just barely scraping by the minimum spec, where they suggest having a GT1030 when running a Linux system. When I tested this 5700G's iGPU in modern games, I found that it performed similar to a DDR4-based GT1030, so we're cutting it pretty close. As for the CPU, I think we aren't struggling as much. Minimum specs are for a 4-core, four 4-thread, four 3.4GHz processor, so the Steam Deck is coasting just above there. Regardless, if you're running emulators, there are gobs of people out there trying to get them running, and with the popularity of the Steam Deck, there's no doubt that this will be working on the system too. Moving on. Number 1. Indie! The Steam Deck just screams for indie development, and the industry's popularity seems to be ever-growing. Now that the new hardware is available, I definitely expect to see some games that try to leverage the assets of the Steam Deck. Until then, games like Hades, Stardew Valley, Terraria, Binding of Isaac, and countless others will keep your Steam Deck filled for days to come. However, a word of caution, as with any of the other games we've talked about, keep the platform's limitations in mind. Anything too demanding or too fast-paced might not translate to this portable gaming rig. I played a couple rounds of Splitgate here, and I think this type of game is pushing the limit in terms of the capability and the ergonomics. Let's not forget, if your Wi-Fi goes down, you're SOL. Now I know that there are a whole lot of games that I didn't get to talk about today, but judging by the subreddit, we've covered the highlights pretty well. However, this video wouldn't be complete with a few last minute shoutouts. Half-Life, Quake, Hitman 3, Left 4 Dead 2, Crisis, Rocket League, Doki Doki, Portal, Hollow Knight, and pretty much anything left on my Steam library from all of those Steam summer sales. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. And that's a wrap for my top 10 games that I'm going to be playing on my Steam Deck when it comes out later this year. Let me know down below what y'all are looking forward to playing. Now, if y'all made it to the end of the video, I appreciate it very much. Make sure to hit the like, comment, subscribe, all those other YouTube things help me out. And if y'all want a sneak peek of what's coming next week, we're going to be talking about the PlayStation 5 and the definitive console killer setup for this generation. So guys, I love you. Thank you, Turk Force, for watching. We will catch you next week. Take care.